what i definitely want to ask you is if you're familiar with dhruv rati's videos yeah uh, yeah you are yes now let's place dhruv rati at one i would actually place him at one end of the spectrum right because i think he has strong views and i respect him as a content creator but i do place him at one end of the spectrum yes and then at the other end i'd probably place i don't know any of the indian news channels exactly there are fair, <laughs> fair to say absolutely yeah yeah i i can't think of a news channel ndtv used to be somewhere in the middle of the spectrum maybe on for for the sake of conversation let's call it left and right right durati extreme left yeah please correct me if you well i don't know if you know like this right and left i i'm a bit but you can say that uh you know like people like Dhruv Rati and all that you can argue or you know like even people like Ravish Kumar you know like who are very popular phenomenon they are at one end of the spectrum uh, in terms of the fact left right i'm not sure you know who i would call left and right because i think it's all be uh, i'm grown up to thinking left and right in economic terms okay uh, you know that for me left in economic terms mean people who want uh, much more government and people on right who want much less government can that's the economic but in in political terms you're right i think let's just put it that these people are very anti the current government and then you have a whole bunch of these you know people you know like uh, the traditional news mainstream news media where uh, most of them are on the very pro government narrative right yeah yeah i'm just going to openly say it is anti bjp pro bjp sure it's the government okay yeah. uh now a friend of mine shreya godavat has this uh, quote that she had shared with me she said that if you're on either of the extremes it's actually like a horseshoe you're closer to each other than you are distant okay because you have opinions that do contain a filter of your own emotions and your own political opinion as a human being yes which is okay because i guess you're in media and you are entitled to express your own human side as a part of your creativity yeah. which in this case is reporting upon the government yeah but i don't believe that dhruv rathi is completely right and i don't believe that the traditional news media in our country is completely right Correct. and the truth lies somewhere in the middle yes right yes because i don't understand economics as much as you do the direct question to you is can the truth of the performance of the current government be determined completely by the numbers is that a yes well i'd say that apart from numbers it's also what you see right in terms of the fact that what numbers now some people argue the numbers are doctored exactly. and this and the other but i think it's about what you experience what do you travel yes. you know in terms of what you see in india has so, india changed in 5 10 years of course it's changed let's break down this thought yeah. a little more um hmm. uh, it's about what you see it's about the numbers which may or may not be um uh, manipulated yeah uh, a third factor i'd put in is it's also about what general chatter you hear when you speak to people from different parts of society yeah anything else that you'd like to factor in no i think that uh, it's that and as i said that once again there is the objective numbers for example what are some of the objective numbers right sure. there's numbers the government releases which you can sort of think i mean i uh, you know like have issues with but then again i go back to my role as an investor i meet companies these companies are reporting real like revenue numbers like this company what was the growth rate what were uh, in terms of you know it's a consumer company it's directly interfacing with the consumer or it's got to do with some company that's building infrastructure in the country so you get to see the real numbers and then you have to see those numbers and see in terms of how well is india doing also from that perspective and uh, and so therefore i think that that is another uh, lens that i think we should add to these various factors i want you to expand on this exact narrative that we're speaking about right yeah. now the only tiny question i'll uh, throw at you before you begin the expansion is that we had a political commentator who was anti bjp on the show yeah he said that whatever growth you see in india would have happened even if the congress was there because the growth is an outcome of the population and its own growth and then i've posed this question to different people the people who are anti bjp agree with him yeah. the people who are pro bjp say that no it depends on who is uh in a position of power yeah. those people and their policies will dictate uh the growth of a country when it comes to this question i agree with the pro bjp people in terms of the people who are sitting in the lok sabha uh the current uh leaders of the country do decide where the country goes yeah. so can you explain this answer first like could you answer this question yeah sure 
So I think there is no debate for me in in my head, and I wrote about this even when I published my first book, Breakout Nations, that the previous government, especially in the second term, you know what was called the UPA, their economic track record was dismal. Was you know like in terms of that what they did, uh, in terms of if you look at the amount of spending that went out of control, uh, if you look at the inflation that happened, uh, I think, and also the fact that the vulnerability of our external position, the rupee and everything. That this that the second term in particular was a very bad track record. In fact, in many ways, the uh, reason for the current government and the rise of Modi was because the track record of that government, particularly in the second term, was so bad. So I think that the you know like this idea that no matter who's in power, every, something will happen. I think is too simplistic a view. I've seen many countries also do very well for a time, and then some wrong leader comes, and then they can destroy the country. So. the effect of leadership does matter but as i said the all these debates have to be nuanced because the uh, because even the previous government the congress government there were some very good spells also when it did for example the 1990s economic reforms were launched by the congress government after all uh, in terms of what it did uh, now of course it happened under pressure we had no choice because we were out of money so we were forced to do some steps but the reforms were there so therefore i think that the narrative when you know like the fact that the last 60 years were all a like you know terrible uh, era and then the last 10 years have been all uh, the other way i think there are some nuances to that too that yes there's no doubt that the second term of the previous government was terrible and that's what laid the ground for the bjp and 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 mr modi's rise and in terms of what they have done over the last 10 years there have been couple of big mistakes they too have made I was very against demonetization. I think that was a mistake. I also felt the fact that in the initially, the very hard lockdown, everyone's got to remain home. We can't do anything, etc., was also a bit draconian. But generally, especially in the second term of this government, I'd say the economic policy has broadly been sensible, and that has helped. That has helped, and that shows up in terms of the stock market's performance as well, and the. Uh, you know like that's there so i think that it's broadly been okay the economic performance in the second term in particular of this government i think has been much better than the economic performance of let's say the upa in its second term uh, so that distinction has to be made but yet i don't agree with this narrative that the last 60 because even if you look at india as you know like one of my favorite charts i do about india is this one one of the favorite things about india that when india got its independence back in 1947 we are ranking if you look at in the world right was like in terms of uh, you know was um, uh, we were a very poor country in terms of what we inherited and our ranking but many of the countries were poor the big thing was that for the next after that right up until the 1980s india's ranking remained low or kept slipping whereas so many of the countries overtook us and did so well uh, you know like uh, even including you know, i mean like you know that china and india their per capita income level which is that in you know, how much each person earns every day in these countries was equal till the 1980s and then after that today uh, china today uh, is five times richer than india is today you know so it's like it was equal to the 1980s today china is five times richer than we are so in terms of the fact is that yes india's economic performance right up in the, until the 1980s was like very uh, poor i would say then you had the economic reforms in the early 1990s which helped to you know start lift india up but china took off even in a greater way but there's no doubt that a lot was done in those few years in the early 1990s as well uh, of economic reforms and what the government back then did so again as i said these debates have to be nuanced uh, you know in terms of that and i'm trying to do that here because the easy solution is to say good and bad 